One of the cool things about Spring Boot actuators is all of the different Spring Boot actuator endpoints that are available to you. There's literally dozens and it really behooves you. I love that word. It's so condescending. It really behooves you to go to the Spring Boot documentation and just take a look at all of the different categories that you can expose endpoints for. A uh, lazy man's way to do that, and that's me, I'm a lazy man, is actually to go into the application.properties file or application.yaml. I don't discriminate. And Type in management.endpoint and control spacebar in Eclipse or VS Code, or if you're really wealthy, IntelliJ. And you'll actually see the list of all of the things that you can get metrics for. Loaded beans, caches, conditions, flyway, health metrics, logging, quartz, Prometheus, Jackson. The list goes on and on and on. It really is pretty incredible, all of the different things things that you can configure. I'm going to go over 10 of my favorites here. And the very last one is going to be metric. So I, I hope you stick around for that one because I think that one is especially cool. Now, taking a look at this here, uh, one of the endpoints that I've already exposed is Envy. E N V. So you can see here, this is just the output and boy, there's a lot of environment variables in here, right down to just how my JVM is configured on my local machine. Again, you always want to be using a spring profile because you want to make sure that if you're exposing a lot of endpoints, you're only doing that in dev. And curiously, the very first thing that this E N V environment endpoint tells me is what profile I'm in. That's one of the reasons why I like this. Because if something's going wrong, it's good to know that, oh, you know, maybe I accidentally configured the QA or production endpoint or something along those lines. That's why I can't connect to my database. So that's one setting that I like. Another one is just health. And we've seen that before. But, you know, with a lot of these endpoints, you can configure them to give you a little bit more information. So Right here, I'm going to ask for to show components, show details, even do some probes on Christian. I'll click Control S, save those changes, come back to my browser, type in health, and boom, we're getting all sorts of extra information. I can make that look pretty. The only problem is when I make it look pretty, it goes uh, a little bit off the screen. So condense it up there, make it ugly. And you can see it's got the ping status. It's got the liveness. It's got the readiness state. It's even telling you how much free space is available on my hard drive, which is kind of cool as well. So you can, a lot of these endpoints like health, they'll show you some basic information, but if you go into the properties file and add a few configurations in there, you can get a little bit more information out of them, which is pretty interesting. Uh, a couple of others that are just neat. One of the things that you can do is take a look at all of the different loggers that are configured here. You never know who's chopping down a tree or doing some beach combing. This tells you all of the different loggers that are configured in your Spring Boot application and specifically what the level of logging is for them. So you can see a lot of this is configured for info. It's also telling you what my environment supports levels off, error, warn, info, debug, and trace. So that's information, interesting information as well, especially if you're not getting the output that you think you should be. Um, another thing you can take a look at is just a list of all of the different beans that have been configured in your environment. You can see actuators slash beans, and this will show you all of the different components that have been configured, what their scope is, whether it's singleton or prototype, all sorts of lists here. Now this will show you the ones that Spring has already configured, and there's a lot of them. At the same time, it'll show you yours as well. Now, by the way, one thing I will mention, there's a lot of disinformation about dependency injection and inversion of control on the internet. I did a, a video just kind of showing you the, the lies that a number of people in the tech world are telling people about dependency injection. It's not so much lies as much as just they're misinformed on it. But you know, when you see a video with a million views uh, and they're telling you something that's wrong, uh, it gets the hairs in the back of my neck to stand up a little bit. So please check out that tutorial that I did on dependency injection. 
can't keep everybody honest. Okay, so beans is cool. Um, also conditions. Now you might be thinking, what is this condition stuff? When you're, you do auto configuration in Spring Boot, and of course, that's one of the reasons why we love Spring Boot, because, you know, we'll auto configure an H2 database for us. And all we have to do is talk about the JDBC URL for a, a, a SQL database, and it'll create the connections for us. It does all of that through auto configuration. What you can do is turn on conditions, and it'll tell you which components are actually turned on for auto configuration and which ones are turned off. And so you can actually see here, there's even a list of classes that are unconditional. They're on no matter what. So if there is something that is, should be configured or isn't configuring itself, this is a good piece of information to look at. Now you can actually get this in the log files. If you set your logging to debug equals true, the only problem is, we well, can see here, this is a huge amount of information and it does bloat your blogs right when your application starts up. So that's one of the reasons why it's nice to actually bring it out here. The other cool thing about this, of course, too, is, you know, this is all JSON that's coming back. So it's real easy just to, to write a little React program or JavaScript program that consumes this, or you could do Spring MVC, why not? And just consume this and display it in a, a friendly way for yourself, if this is something that you're going into quite a bit. Okay, configuration properties. So how are things configured inside of my environment? That's one that I like. Scheduled tasks, this is cool as well, especially if there is something that's supposed to be going on a regular routine and it's not firing off. As you can see, I don't have any cron jobs set up right here, so it's not too interesting to me. Uh, one that is interesting is thread dumps. So this will give you an idea of all the different threads that are running. I don't know if this supports virtual threads right now or not, but it'll give you information about threads that are blocked, how many threads are running, who the owner is, what the weight count. So if you've got some uh, contingency issues or concurrency issues going on in your environment. These are a couple of cool properties to check out as well. Now, another one that I like is shutdown, but watch this. If I type in shutdown, I get this white label page. And in fact, I, if I'm in Postman, and I try and do a get on stop. I end up getting that that very unsatisfactory 404 error message. So you can actually stop your application remotely. Is it stop or is it shut down? I think it's shut down. Uh, but either way, it isn't enabled right now. So this is one that you actually have to explicitly enable. This isn't part of that package of things that are enabled by default. Obviously, the ability to shut down your application is something that they don't want to have built in. The endpoint is shut down. So I've enabled it. I can come over here to shut down. I got it right the first time. Click enter. And it still doesn't work. We need a better instructor here. Actually, you notice it's got a 405 now. So before I think it was a 404, it just didn't exist. Before it simply didn't exist. Now it exists. We just can't call it. Well, we can't call it with a get invocation. That's why you got to pull out your little postman application. See if I do a, a get invocation on shutdown, it says the method is not allowed. So let's find a method that is allowed. Let's go over to the post. So I'll click send and boom, all of a sudden it says we are shutting down and if we come back and take a look at the console here, you can actually see that the shutdown was initiated and now that shutdown is complete. That is a, a pretty cool configuration setting as well. So what do we have there? Health, environment, loggers, beans, conditions, config prop, scheduled tasks, thread dump, shutdown. There's one more. It's metrics. Metrics is what we're going to take a look at next.